you if you if you if you just expand it through isothermal process and then you again compress it through isothermal process then the graph would be like this and the work done uh then 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 what will happen is a obviously you will have some work done if you have a pressure and volume uh, axis like this but the problem would be that this this does not fits in with the cycle through which a heat engine goes because in a heat engine you have you have basically various steps number one is this gas goes and takes away heat with source and then it does something in engine and then it gives up the heat to the sink and then it moves back to the source so uh, here actually there are four steps involved and if you just take two processes then the four steps will not be shown so actually you know you ca you cannot model this heat engine by just two processes back and forth like this so you need to have four processes and these are the two kind of common process isothermal and adiabatic so that's what carnot did he designed a engine like this so that you will have four processes and using these four kind of processes you also can make a cyclic process so and you have you have various other possibilities you can have you, you can you can have other processes which are not isothermal which are not adiabatic but still it will be a cyclic process and that will give you one kind of heat engine but this is a special kind of heat engine for the reason you will understand later and this heat engine is carnot cycle i mean this 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 change of a state like this is this cycle this is carnot cycle fine so the engine employing this carnot cycle will be carnot heat engine so this is what carnot cycle is if i draw another diagram corresponding to temperature and entropy now see from 1 to 2 on going from state 1 to state 2 the temperature is constant by definition of entropy ds is equal to dq reversible by t fine now this is a reversible process so whatever q is here that is dq reversible so on heating when you are when you are expanding this gas so actually it's isothermal and we have taken a idle gas in our system idle gas is a function of temperature and temperature is remaining constant that means internal energy internal energy of an idle gas is a function of temperature temperature here is constant that's why internal energy will remain constant delta u is equal to q plus w as per first law of thermodynamics now delta u is zero because temperature is constant so internal energy will not change so change in internal energy is zero now you are doing the gas is doing some work because it's expanding so during expansion work is done by the gas we studied this when we studied work we have a understanding of this so work is being done by the gas so energy is being abstracted from the gas but the internal energy is not changing that means some heat has to be given so in this case from 1 to 2 q is positive if q is positive here then ds will be positive and through the entire process from 1 to 2 you are giving some heat so when you are giving some heat entropy of the system is increasing during 1 to 2 so if we start from 1 from 2 the entropy will continuously increase like this and because it's isothermal process the temperature will remain constant so on temperature entropy graph this is how the process will be shown from 1 to 2 on moving from 2 to 3 that's an adiabatic reversible process ds is dq reversible by t by definition adiabatic is a process in which there is no heat exchange that means dq is zero we have seen this before so dq is zero that means ds is zero ds is zero that means change in entropy is zero so whatever entropy was there at state 2 the same entropy will be there at state 3 so this is how you go from 2 to 3 all right now from 3 to when you come to 4 again the temperature is constant temperature is constant but the volume is decreasing that means work is being done on the gas work is being done on the gas that means energy is given to the gas but still internal energy is not changing because temperature is constant so where that energy is going that energy must be lost as heat so heat is being coming out of the system during 3 to 4 so dq is negative so ds is negative that means entropy is decreasing 
So from 3 to 4, the entropy will decrease like this. Entropy is decreasing. And again, because it's an adiabatic process, entropy will remain constant. So you in go from 4 to 1 like this. It's a perpendicular line. like this fine so this is how ts will uh, ts graph will look like for the system so it was important how to draw ts and it also will help us to get other results regarding this carnot cycle fine now what we have to do is in this engine this qh energy was given now this qh energy out of this qh energy certain amount of work is done and certain amount of heat is released off as exhaust. Now this work done will be equal to amount of energy that you gave and the amount of energy that the engine released as exhaust heat. That will be equal to work. This is very simple. Now, if you see, if, uh, if, uh, if, if, if I name this as S1 and this is as S2. Fine. Now, um, the total amount of heat that was uh, given to the system that will be equal to if you if ds is equal to dq by t. Fine. Now, from one to two, some amount of heat is given, and from three to four, some amount of heat is released. Now, that difference is going to give me work. Fine. So that difference would be now on 1 to 2 some amount of heat is given. So dq is ds into t. So that amount of heat that was given is qh. So qh will be equal to ds into t. Now temperature here is constant. Now this temperature is a temperature of source. This is th. And temperature here is also constant. And this temperature is a temperature of sink. This is tc. Fine. Now, what you see from on going from 1 to t, entropy is increasing, that means heat is given and that heat given is equal to dq from here you can see that dq is equal to ds into t. ds is equal to s2 minus s1 and t is th. Fine. So this is amount of heat which is given. The amount of heat that is released is equal to, if you see qc is equal to Heat that is released, if I am just looking at the magnitude of it, then that will be also equal to S2 minus S1 into Tc. Fine. Now, efficiency of the engine is the output by input. If it, efficiency is represented by eta, then this eta is equal to output. The engine is supposed to do some work. So, output of the engine is work. And the input of the engine is the amount of heat that is I am given. So the, what's happening to this engine is I'm giving some QH and it is giving doing some work W. So the input to this engine was QH. And this is only doing a partial, utilizing a partial in, energy of the input W and the rest is going as exhaust. So efficiency is the utilization, the amount of energy utilized as W upon the input QH. Now this W, we have seen that W will be equal to QH minus QC, input minus exhaust. So this W will be equal to TH minus TC into S2 minus S1. This is what uh, QH minus QC is upon QH. Now QH you can see the amount of heat given is TH into S2 minus S1. Okay. Now from here, we can see that efficiency, this S2 minus S1 will cancel out. This will be equal to 1 minus Tc by Th. A more familiar relation you will find in book as 1 minus T2 by T1. Where T2 is the high, uh, or they will write it as T1 minus T1 by T2. Where T2 is the higher temperature and T1 is the lower temperature. This we took as Th, T high, fine. Generally, you will find the equation, this equation written as 1 minus T1 by T2. Where T2 is the temperature of the source, which is supposed to be higher, 
and T1 is the temperature of the sink which is supposed to be lower. So the efficiency of this turns out to be 1 minus T1 by T2. The higher the temperature difference or the higher the ratio of this T1 by T2, then lower will be the efficiency. If T2 is very high and T1 is very low, then the efficiency will be high. So the temperature of the sink, if we can make it as 0, then the efficiency will be 1. The efficiency cannot be 1 because T1 cannot be 0. Because remember temperature here is in Kelvin and 0 Kelvin is unachievable. So 0 Kelvin is not achievable, so T1 will never be 0. So this efficiency is always going to be less than 1. Fine. So a perfect engine is not possible. This is the result. Now, we were searching something else and this is something that we have to go through. So this is the result. Now we have to uh, get to our thing that we were in search of entropy, remember? We have to relate this with entropy.